श्रीमते रामानुजाय नमः दी आयुर्वेदिक टेक्स गिव अस अ फैसिनेटिंग इनसाइट इनटू दी फंडामेंटल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ वाटर एंड आर रिलेशनशिप विद वाटर नाउ वाटर इज वन ऑफ दी फाइव फंडामेंटल एलिमेंट्स द पंच महाभूतास पृथ्वी वायु आकाश अप एंड अग्नि मोर ओवर वाटर ऑल्सो कंबाइंस विद दी फंडामेंटल एलिमेंट ऑफ पृथ्वी और अर्थ टू फॉर्म कफ दोषा विच वन ऑफ द थ्री दोषास दैट मेक अप द ह्यूमन बॉडी now to start with acharya charaka says that all water on earth ultimately originates from one source which is water that falls from the sky as directed by indra further he says that tata patata patitam shaiva desha kala vapekshate which means that the water falling from the skies is affected by the season the atmospheric conditions the rays of the sun or the moon depending on when it falls and more importantly the earth on which the rain water falls and finally the place where it is stored now all this rain water or water that falls in the sky is called as antariksha jala or gaganambu or even ganga in some texts like the shushuta samhita now the acharyas also say that the water that falls from the sky is of four varieties which is torrential rainfall the melting of snow uh, dew or mist and finally hail stones in an ideal scenario rain water which is pure and collected in certain seasons and in certain months of the year is the best water for human health it is almost considered as a nectar by the ayurvedic acharyas but how do we know whether this rain water which we have collected is pure or not because as the text say it is affected by the atmospheric conditions that during which the rain water fell now acharya shushruta gives a very clear test to check the quality of the rain water take a silver vessel put the sample of rain water in the silver vessel and add a ball of cooked rice into it after one muhurta of 48 minutes if the rain water sample does not change color and it doesn't affect the ball of cooked rice much then it is pure on the other hand after 48 minutes if the color of the water changes white like that of the cooked rice and the ball of cooked rice in the rain water becomes excessively moist then it is unfit water and it cannot be drunk now the acharyas say in an ideal world we should collect pure rain water from a clean place store it in a clean vessel and use it for drinking through the year now when we are seeing this video today this collection of pure rain water or antariksha jala or gaganambu might seem like a fantasy so what is the next option so the acharyas then clearly tell us that if we don't have access to pure rain water and the next one is bhauma jala or terrestrial water which is rain water that is fallen onto earth the text also tell us that the bhauma jala a terrestrial water is of seven types from a river from a tank from a lake from an artificial lake from a spring from a waterfall or from a pit dug in a ground like a well so today when we are living in an urban context in an apartment and we don't have access to any of these most of these seven types of uh, you know terrestrial water what are we supposed to do how can we get the benefit of the wisdom of the ayurvedic text now if we are really really lucky and in our home we have a traditional well which is open to the sky then we are really really lucky because the text say that this is also an excellent type of water source for us to drink because it is exposed to the rays of the sun in the day time and in the moonlight at night and acharya shushita in his text says that this is equal to pure rain water but even if that water is not available to us today which is the case for most of us in cities what are we supposed to do for if you see for most of us today we use a uh, borewells that are dug deep into the ground to collect ground water and that's the primary source of drinking water that we have and this is why it is very very important to understand the ayurvedic properties of purifying water or jala shodhana because when we don't have access to a pure well water or river water or rain water then the purification as per the ayurvedic method becomes even more important now acharya shushruta says that water can be purified in three ways one is by boiling water second is by exposing it to the sun rays and third by immersing hot iron balls into the water obviously today for us boiling water is the practical option now the question that immediately one can ask is but i have an ro filter at home i'm buying mineral water why should i boil water now there are two reasons for this boiling water obviously removes bacteria and germs and makes it little safe from a microbial point of view but from an ayurvedic point of view that's not the important reason boiling the water 
especially if it is the borewell kind of water which is coming from deep under the earth which we have today in most of our homes transforms the water now water this borewell water from deep under the ground which has not been exposed to the elements like a river water or well water might be is very cold and heavy to digest and it can dampen our agni or digestive fire if this is the only kind of water that we drink on a daily basis now when we boil this it is called ushnodaka or boiled water so acharya sushruta says that ushnodakam or boiled water when drunk warm is good for all of us in all conditions for good health the phrase that he uses is patyam ushnodakam sada now most of us are not used to the habit of drinking warm water so the second option is at least we should boil the water well and then cool it and when it's at an agreeable temperature or it becomes room temperature we can drink it we can drink it the point here to note is that we should not be drinking water directly which has been filtered which is cold and uncooked or unboiled that's the key principle for when we drink ushnodaka on a regular basis the ayurvedic text say that there are a number of small health conditions which can be cured for example the boiled water drunk warm helps us in case of vata aggravation the boiled water which is cooled and drunk also helps in cases of uh, pitta aggravation so in all cases the first principle to remember is filter the water make sure that it is free from uh, microbial contamination then boil it and then drink it warm is preferable if not at least then cool it and then drink it now what are the characteristics of good boiled water as per ayurveda again acharya shushruta here clearly says that when we boil the water our drinking water it should not froth it should not spill over from the vessel in which we are boiling it it must appear clean and obviously there should be no foul smell coming from it and ideally he says that the water should be boiled to one fourth its original level for it to be suitable for everyone in every condition now he says that if you take a liter of water boil it to about 250 ml which makes it ideal for everyone now that may not be always possible but even in this case if we just boil it well till it reaches a rolling boil and you can see the bubbles coming up and then the water volume reduces slightly even that water is excellent for drinking now here is a very very important condition that acharya sushruta also says that this boiled water ushnodaka must be drunk on the same day which it is boiled it should under no circumstance be stored overnight and drunk the next day or used for cooking the next day so if you have excess boiled water the next day please discard it don't drink it or use it for cooking <clears throat> now i hope you found this discussion on the origins of water as per ayurveda the various forms it can take once the rain water hits the ground and the various properties of ushnodaka useful and that you would consider boiling your water your drinking water tomorrow when you use it now i would like to conclude this video by offering a prayer to lord shriman narayana which is appropriate in this video akashat patita toyam yatha gachati sagaram sarva deva namaskarah keshavam prati gachati thank you for taking the time to watch this video and would love to hear your comments uh, do drop them in the comment section below